but I'm really excited to to present this session to you where we're going to work through um, some of the most effective marketing tactics for accountants and bookkeepers and then we're going to wrap that all up by trying to create a 90-day plan at the end so um, so let's get into it so my name is Matt Wilkinson and I'm the founder and CEO of Bizig. I've been a marketer since 1999, working exclusively with accountants and bookkeepers since 2010. And um, I'm the, yeah, like I say, the founder and CEO of Biz Inc. We launched in 2012 and we help busy accountants and bookkeepers market their firms. And we've worked with several hundred firms across the globe. Um, so this webinar is going to be based on what we've learned from doing that. And when I'm not, when I'm not working, I like to climb uh, mountains and, and frozen waterfalls for fun. So there's a, there's a picture of me doing that. So today's session, what we're gonna cover, we're gonna have a look at nailing your marketing niche and why that's really important. We're gonna have a look at some marketing quick wins versus more longer, longer play tactics. So gonna have a look at tried and tested traditional marketing that often gets ignored in favor of shiny new things. I'm gonna take a look at lead generating websites because websites are still a really important part of your marketing mix. And the last part is gonna to be to look at the, the 90 day growth plan. So who is your target market? Who do you focus your marketing on? When I typically ask this question of accounting and bookkeeping firms, the answer I usually get is small businesses. In fact, I talked to a firm recently and the owner told me his focus was small businesses in New York and New Jersey. Now, according to the US Small Business Administration, there are over 2 million small businesses in New York. That's actually 7.2% of all the small businesses in the US. And I haven't even included New Jersey in those numbers. Now, 2 million is a nice number. And you might think, well, even 0.01% of that is 200 clients. But out of 2 million businesses, how are you going to reach the right 200 prospects to fit your firm? For example, in New York, shop in Queens. Yep, they're all small businesses, but their wants and their needs are totally different. If you were to run a marketing campaign, how could you possibly appeal to all these three businesses at the same time? The reality is that by trying to appeal broadly, it actually means you have no appeal at all. Or as I like to say, marketing to everybody is marketing to nobody. So how do you avoid the scattergun approach to marketing that many firms have? Ask yourself, how many clients would you like in any given month? I mean, how many could you actually handle? For many firms I talk to, the answer is just one or two new clients. Hey so Matt, sorry to one, interrupt. Yep, yeah, no problem. I don't think the screens, the slides are flicking through. Okay, no problem. Let's um. Let's get that going. Apologies for that, guys. Um, there so we go. That's worked for me now. Should be working now. All right, thanks, that and to you. So yeah, going back to the slides. Um, so if you only want one or two new clients, or even five or ten, you should not be marketing to thousands of prospects. You should be marketing only to the prospects who suit your business model, your firm's culture, and who will be profitable and enjoyable to work with. In other words, you've got to bring focus to your marketing. So how do you bring focus to your marketing? Well, first, you need to work out who is your ideal prospect. You should never work with someone just because they walk through the door and are willing to pay your fees. So I'm going to have a look at um, how you do that in just a minute. And by focusing on your ideal prospect, you can create marketing that is 100% targeted to them. And that makes its appeal much stronger, so you win more new business. 
And when you become focused on your ideal prospect, you stop wasting time and budget on other marketing. And that also creates clarity and it makes your marketing decisions much easier. So um, I'm interested to see how many of you have a focus to your marketing. I'm gonna launch a quick survey, a quick poll rather. Um, if you could just flick that up and here. Um, so the question is, do you focus your marketing? Um, in other words, do you kind of market it to everybody or do you just, um, you know, do, do, you, do you just um, focus in on, on a certain niche or a vertical? So I'll just give that a few more seconds to, to run through. Thanks for filling that in, guys. Okay. Um, most of you have voted. Let's close that off. Um, so if we share those results. We can see that 55% um, of you are marketing to, to everyone and 45% it's really good. You're actually focusing down on, on your ideal prospect. So I'm gonna look at that next and, um, and how, you know, look at how you decide on who, you, who is your ideal prospect. So for those of you who are already, doing, who are already focusing hopefully you'll get some tips here on, on maybe how to to clarify that even further so when we're working with firms who, who are quite generalist what we first ask them to do is go look who do you really like working with because being in practice should be fun so don't choose a type of prospect just because other firms do or because you've worked with with lots of those type of clients in the past Next, think about does your ideal prospect come from a certain industry, a profession or, or a vertical? I've worked with firms whose ideal prospect is cafe and restaurant owners. I've worked with a firm that focused on tourism operators and even a sole trader who specialized in the horse racing industry. If you have a specialism, you might want to focus horizontally instead of vertically. For example, you could target businesses with inventory, which could cover different sectors like e-commerce or retail. Or perhaps what defines your ideal prospect is a shared challenge or problem. And once you have some idea of who your ideal prospect is, you need to work out what their pain points are. So try and put yourself in their shoes and think about what keeps them awake at night. Yeah, for example, do you know what your prospects love doing or why they launch their business? If you do, what's getting them in the, getting in the way of them doing that, you know, doing what they love? What makes them stressed? What jobs do they simply hate doing and why? Um, are there financial, legal or regulatory pressures that are making their life hell? Understanding your prospects' pain points is the key to successful marketing. You want to make your prospects feel like you know their problems inside out. Instead of just being another accounting business, you become someone they would love to work with. At Bazinc, the reason we get chosen by accountants and bookkeepers above local marketing firms, is because we have a deep understanding of the pain points around marketing for accountants and bookkeepers. You know, things like lack of time, lack of marketing training, and, and lack of budget. So all of our marketing speaks to these pain points, and that gives us much more traction than a generalist marketing company. So obviously, knowing the pain points is one thing. Um, it's also really important to, um, you know, to, to have solutions to those pain points as well, and be able to articulate those benefits to, to your ideal prospect. Um, and a couple of things to note here. First, I'm not suggesting you niche your whole firm. My goal for this webinar is to make you a better marketer. You know, like I said earlier, marketing to everybody is marketing to nobody. And to avoid this, you need an ideal prospect to direct your marketing to. So basically what I'm saying is you need to niche your marketing. Like I'm not saying you need to sack all of your old clients and if you get referred clients outside of your marketing niche, that isn't a problem. 
Second thing I just wanted to note is that your ideal prospect now might not be your ideal prospect in six months. This is an ongoing process. You will make mistakes along the way, and that's not a problem. You can always pivot to a new ideal prospect. Um, the, the, the main thing to realize is that you have to bring some focus to your marketing. So the next part of uh, the process that we like to run through with clients is what we call the prospect map. And this is basically a profile of where your ideal prospect hangs out. And because we brought focus to our marketing, it's really, really easy to do. So first of all, what you need to do is start thinking about where, where are your ideal prospects physically located? Will you be marketing just to people in your town or your city? Or are you gonna go wider? You know, are you gonna go national or even international? You'll want to try and find out their contact details because the next step is gonna to be to reach out to them. And a combination of things like Google, Yellow Pages, and other business directories is all you need to do to find the contact details of your prospects. I'd also be thinking about you know, events and conferences that your ideal prospect attends. You know, obviously, BizInc only works with accountants and bookkeepers. So I recently went to ZeroCon in Atlanta. And you know, I'm regularly going to other accounting conferences like in Australia, New Zealand, the UK. Um, I'm meeting firms that we'd like to work with. Also have a think about are your prospects members of a trade association or a professional association? You know, list that down too. We're, we're just trying to build up a really uh, full picture of um, everything about your, your ideal prospect. Next, I'd be thinking about where do they hang out online? Many business owners will have a social media presence, um, but you know, which are the platforms that your prospects are using? For professionals, they're almost certainly gonna be on LinkedIn. Facebook cuts across many industries, uh, but things like Instagram tend to be popular in certain industries like food, creative, tourism, or maybe businesses run by younger people. So what we're trying to do here is kind of like stalking, right? We're trying to find out as much as we can about our prospect, what makes them tick. And, and so social media can be a really good way to do that. You know, check out business groups on LinkedIn and Facebook. There you can not only research the pain points of your prospects, later on when you start doing some marketing, they can be great places to, to visit and, and maybe talk to some prospects. and. It, it seems obvious and simple, uh, but you know, it's, it, you should only be in the places where your prospects are. Yet so many firms I see are spreading their marketing way too wide. You know, if you focus only on being in the places where your prospect is, you'll save time and you'll save money. So I hope you can see in this first part of the webinar how important it is to nail your marketing niche so, so you're not marketing to everybody. And we cover the whole process of defining your ideal prospect and creating your prospect map in the Bizink Marketing Blueprint process. So firms who sign up for the Marketing Blueprint get to work with our team to create a marketing strategy and action plan that is tailored to their firm. So the cost of that is normally $999, but later on I'm gonna give you a chance to win a Marketing Blueprint or get a big discount if, if you don't win. So if you regularly want to win new clients, nailing your marketing niche is really important. But it's not the only new way, it's not the only way to grow, and it's definitely not going to happen overnight. So what I want to have a look at now are some marketing quick wins and compare those to kind of longer plays that take a lot more time to put in place. Having a long-term strategy is really important. But if you need more revenue fast, then quick wins are strategic. So let's have a look at what marketing delivers fast results um, first. So the three tactics I'm gonna focus on, marketing to clients, following up of old leads, and your referral network. So the number one tactic is marketing to existing clients. 
winning new clients is hard. You know, anyone else, anyone who tells you otherwise is, is lying. And that's true whether you're an accountant or a bookkeeper, a startup or an established firm in a big city or a small town. So your best source of new business is old clients because they already trust you. The thing, thing you need to ask yourself is, do all of your clients, existing clients, know about all the ways that you could help them? I bet they don't. Right? Based on speaking to lots of firms, I bet they don't all know. So your job after this webinar is to make sure that they do. And you don't have to be clever here. It's just a case of reaching out, maybe by email or phoning them, but also make that a regular task. Don't assume that just because you've emailed somebody that they've read it. Repetition is really underrated in marketing and it usually takes several touches before people respond. So in the same way that clients are more likely to buy from you, leads who you've already been in contact with are more likely to become clients than fresh leads. You know, you've already had some relationship with them, so you should be revisiting these old leads regularly. Hopefully, you're storing information about the people you've had sales interaction with in maybe your practice management software, or, or maybe you've got a CRM. And that enables you to go back and reach out to them, for instance, once a quarter, um, and, you know, see if the time has become right because timing is such a crucial factor in the buying process and people will only engage you when they are ready so make sure you stay warm with older leads as you never know when that timing becomes right and they're looking to engage an accountant or a bookkeeper final quick win you know is you all know that having a healthy referral network is really important. But when Bizink surveyed over 400 accounting and bookkeeping firms last year, 36% do absolutely nothing to get more referrals. So make it a habit to stay warm with your referral partners like lawyers, bankers, and business brokers, and also ask clients for referrals. And you need to be doing this systematically instead of ad hoc. And I can guarantee that will regularly get you new clients. So these three tactics will deliver more revenue and, um, and new clients fast. You know, they're all things that will work pretty fast. So you should focus on them before moving on to the longer plays. And in those, I would include SEO, search engine optimization, social media, and inbound marketing. So these are things that I see a lot of firms doing, and absolutely they're all worth doing. But I see a lot of firms also expecting them to deliver immediate results, and they don't. So you know, to set your expectations, these three tactics probably have a lead time of six to 12 months before you're gonna see significant results from them. So if your priority is growth right now, Make sure you're looking at the quick wins first, because I know you've got limited time for marketing, so you have to be focusing on what works best first. So every day we get bombarded with the latest marketing methods, which of course are guaranteed to deliver incredible results. And we all know the reality of this kind of stuff is, is quite different. It's really important not to get suckered in by these kind of shiny new things and actually remember that so-called traditional marketing still works. In fact, the reason it is traditional is because it worked in the past, it works now, and it will continue working in the future. So I'm going to run through three tactics that you might think are a bit old school, but which consistently deliver results for accounting businesses. And they are events, outreach, and email marketing. One of the best ways to market your firm is to get face time with clients and prospects. In our high tech world, high touch has become even more important. So while technology like Skype, Zoom, and Slack makes remote working easier, 
nothing beats meeting in person. So my first advice would be get out and meet your clients as often as you can. Meeting in your office is good, but meeting at their place of work, you'll get a much better feel for what they do, their company culture, and the challenges you can help them with. Now, of course, this can be time consuming. So you might also consider hosting an event for clients or, or perhaps prospects as well. An event doesn't have to be anything more than getting a handful of clients or prospects together and helping solve some of their challenges. It could be at your office, a local bar, a cafe, or a dedicated meeting room at a hotel. You, know, you could do something formal, a uh, presentation, or you could just run it workshop style. I used to attend a business accountability group hosted by an accountant, and he just facilitated the meeting. Everyone else did the talking. You could run a free event, but I've also seen firms charge an entrance fee to encourage more people to show up. Whichever way you do it, having in-person conversations with clients and prospects is hard to beat. And, you know, if you are going to do a client event, you know, why not ask um, them to bring a friend who's also a business owner? That's a great way to get some new leads along and, and get some face time with them. Outreach is, well, outreach is what it says on the tin. It's directly reaching out to prospects and trying to convert them into clients. That might sound a bit like cold calling. And look, there are some similarities, but with a modern approach, you'll only contact warm leads or at least those receptive to your message. Now, pretty much every successful business to business company does outreach marketing. To illustrate this, I recently ran a webinar with Alex Edson, who's the CEO of MailTag, which is a leading sales app. Now, this was actually the first webinar he had ever done, and he built his businesses entirely using outreach. Actually, Alex, age 16, he launched a YouTube talent agency, and within uh, three years, he'd grown that to an annual revenue of over 10 million US. The only type of marketing he did was outreach. So to recap that, he built a YouTube talent agency, which is about as non-traditional a business as you could think of, to $10 million US a year, uh, of revenue a year, within three years. And to do that, his sole tactic was a so-called traditional marketing method, outreach. In the webinar I did with Alex, he shared two simple marketing tips which are at the heart of his success. Number one, prospect every day. Number two, follow up every day. And that's what you should be doing too. A systematic approach like that will give you a predictable way to grow. If you make it a habit to reach out to people every day and follow up your existing leads, you will make sales. Now, if you need a little bit more convincing on this, I highly recommend the book Predictable Revenue by Aaron Ross. Aaron built the Salesforce outreach marketing team, which added $100 million in revenue and was crucial to Salesforce's early success. We'll share a link to that book in the follow-up email. When it comes to return on investment, email is hard to beat. In fact, it returns a staggering $44 for every $1 spent, according to the 2017 Direct Marketing Association report. Now, I actually follow those stats really closely, and that's up from $38 in 2015. And that's not bad considering every year so-called marketing experts line up to say that email marketing is dead. Um, and it's certainly a lot higher return on investment than things like search engines and social media. Now, the main reason it works so well, especially in our vertical, is every business owner has an email address. Some of your clients and prospects will be on Facebook, some will use search engines, and some might be on LinkedIn. But every one of them will have an email address, and most will check their inbox several times every day. So email should be a key tactic in your marketing toolkit. 
I'd recommend sending the following types of emails every single month. Firstly, send an email newsletter to clients and send an email newsletter to prospects. This is just an easy way to stay warm in your market and also promote your products and your services. Second, you should be sending what I call email blasts. Email blast is just a fancy name for one-off promotional emails. For example, it could be an email promoting a new cash flow planning service that you offer. The goal of an email blast is simply to say, here's something that can help you with, and here's how you can get it. So keep each email blast short and simple. You know, actually, you should only be promoting one thing per email, or you'll dilute the message. The way I recommend you plan your email blast is to write down all of the services you offer. Next, write a simple email about each service, explaining the benefits and how to sign up. Then allocate each of these emails to a month in the calendar. So let's say you had six services you wanted to promote, add them every month from January through June. And then in the second half of the year, simply repeat the same emails. People avoid repetition in marketing, but it's critically important. Business owners are always busy, and when your message lands, it might just be a bad time and they ignore it. That doesn't mean they're not interested. You know, fast forward six months, the timing could be better and they respond. So just make sure you repeat your messages because it often takes several touches before people do act. The final thing I love about email marketing, you know, I know most of you are not trained marketers. And, and so for you know, email marketing, it doesn't really require any special skills that you don't have. You just have to have the ability to write clearly. So three tactics there, events, outreach, email. I think they're really important tactics to consider and focus on. Often considered quite traditional, they just work. I want to have a look at websites now because your firm's website is still the center of your marketing world. Whether prospects find you through search or social, an email or at an event, all leads, all of them are going to check out your website. So here are some tips for turning your website from a boring brochure into a lead generator. So quick question before we get into this. Do you actually get any leads from your website now? I'm just going to launch a quick uh, poll and, and find out. Okay, we're getting quite quite a few no's. Keep it going for a few more seconds. All right, cool. Let, let's close that off. So, 57% of firms don't get any leads, um, and that 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 ties in with kind of what we found with our research. So cool, 43% are getting leads from their site, but 57% not getting any leads. So let's run through some ways that you can turn your website from you know, a brochure into, into a lead generator. And this is based on, look, we power the website bizinc of several hundred firms across the globe. And so what I'm gonna show you is based on what we see working on our most successful clients' websites. What I'm gonna cover is you got to make it really easy for people to get in touch. Mobile is a must. Can I have a look at live chat and appointment booking apps, which can both be really effective. Um, and I'm going to have a look at lead magnets. People are lazy online and your competitor's website is just a click away. So if someone is ready to contact you, you've got to make it stupidly easy for them to do that. This means you know, having your phone number featuring prominently on each page of your site, preferably right at the top, having a clear contact us button, leading to a page that is really easy to use. That's also essential. You, know, you should be including your email address on that page, but also an online form. That's much easier to use on mobile devices. 
basically there's got to be no barriers for warm leads to contact you so that's the first thing you've got to make it really easy for people to get in touch you know otherwise they could just click away to one of your competitor sites a mobile friendly website is now essential over 50 percent of google searches are done on mobile devices so in all likelihood potential clients are looking for you on their phone and not sitting behind a desktop computer. So is your, is your website mobile friendly? Well, if you type mobile friendly test into Google, you'll find a site built by Google where you can check if your website passes their test. And if it doesn't pass, the bad news is it doesn't feature in Google mobile searches. So in other words, if someone's searching on their phone or their tablet and your site is not mobile friendly, it will not appear in Google's results. So, you know, at BizInc, every single site we build is mobile friendly as standard. It's really important. So a couple of additional things you might want to add to your site. One of them is, is live chat. Now, that's an optional extra, but it's a really great lead capturing tool. And there's a bunch of great live chat apps that you can integrate with your website. So a couple of options, Olark and Intercom. Uh, Zopim is one we used to use at BizInc, which is now owned by Zendesk. They've got a really good free plan. At BizInc, we've just started using a service called Chatlio, and that allows you to answer the website chats from inside Slack, which is our internal comms app. Now, chat is great because you can talk to leads when they're at their warmest, and that's when they're just active on your website and thinking about you. And chat is really low friction, you know, for the person using it to contact you. It's, it's a lot easier than calling or emailing. And I think people like that they can stay anonymous. So you might have concerns about who will monitor the chat. Um, but, you know, if you've got a front desk, then it's no harder than monitoring phone calls. Or, you know, if you're a sole proprietor, um, then, you know, you're going to be online most of the day anyway. I don't think it's any problem to just have it sitting there. You know, if someone wants to talk to you and talk business, make yourself available. And most live chat services have an option to set yourself as inactive or away. And so if you're away, you know, that hides the chat box or, you know, you can prompt visitors to send you an email instead. So, you know, for me, there's plenty of evidence on the power of chat as a lead capturing tool. And I think that outweighs any of those reservations. So appointment booking software is another optional extra. I'd almost say it's essential because there's nothing worse than playing email tennis when you're trying to book a meeting with someone. Appointment booking experience to clients and prospects and it saves you admin time. Popular options, acuity scheduling, Calendly, Timely, all of those can be embedded into most websites. The main reservation I hear about using appointment booking apps is people don't want to open up their calendar to the public. The simple answer is that all of these services allow you to set availability. And that means people can only book you during the slots that you choose. And you know these apps will also block out time once an appointment has been scheduled, so you can't be double booked. Now we added appointment booking to the BizInc website in 2014. We increased the amount of demos booked each month by 30%. One of the biggest wins in terms of marketing we've ever got. So easy and 30% uplift in demos. We also had this kind of hidden benefit, which was we saved 10 minutes of admin time per booking. So you can check out how we've done it. Go on the BizInc website, bizincconline.com, and you can click on the book demo button in the top right of every page and see how that works. So I would put you know, this one under no-brainer and look into adding appointment booking to your site right away. Final thing I want to look at around websites is, is what we call lead magnets. Because most people who visit your website won't get in touch. Uh, I'm kind of a depressing statistic, but you, I'm sure you all know that from experience. 
And like, why is that? Well, the main reason is that website visitors to accounting and bookkeeping websites, mostly doing research, you know, they're not quite ready to engage you yet. People procrastinate when making big business decisions, you know, like choosing the firm they're going to work with. And it might take them months to finally act. You know, someone might be really unhappy with their current firm, thinking of leaving, doing the research, but the perceived pain of switching makes them hesitate. So while these people, are, they're interested enough to visit your site, they just might not contact you. And if they leave, there's a high chance they'll never come back. So how do you capitalize on that interest while you have them on your site? The answer is lead magnets. Lead magnets are basically valuable pieces of content that visitors can only access if they give you their email address or some other contact details. You know, I like to describe it as a value exchange. You get a lead and a way to follow them up. And in return, the visitor, the lead, they get a useful piece of content. So that content could be something like an ebook or an email course like you see on screen or something like an interactive tool, like a cash flow planning calculator. The best lead magnets have high perceived value, but don't require much effort on the part of the website visitor to obtain them. So, you know, avoid offering the classic free 60 minute consultation. Most people are kind of suspicious of that. You know, they think it's just a sales meeting in disguise. And rather than thinking they're getting 60 minutes of your time, they're gonna see it as losing 60 minutes of theirs. Now on the screen, you can see an example of a lead magnet on the Alloy Silverstein website. It's one of business clients. That's a free course delivered via email that's targeted at their prospects and clients who are interested in zero. And lead magnets like this come as standard in most of Bizink's website packages, which um, you can see a link to in the chat. Last year, Bizink surveyed over 400 accounting and bookkeeping firms from across the globe. We found that 68% didn't have a marketing plan. That was a bit shocking to me, you know, because you guys advise businesses and I'm sure you would not be telling them, you know, oh, don't worry about a business plan. So do a quick test, completely anonymous, get a quick poll. Um, which of you has a marketing plan? Keen to know. I did this recently. I did a marketing webinar for Zero. did a series of webinars, uh, Zero in the States, and the numbers were within, I think, 2% of the numbers on screen here and it looks like it's going to be real close again do you want to close that off please anthea close off the poll <laughs> look at that so i'm not we've not forged that the the numbers are exactly the same as we've got on screen and um so this is obviously a very commonplace thing is that you know pretty much two-thirds of firms don't have um a, a marketing plan so I probably don't need to underline how important it is to have a plan in business. And, you know, the, the most successful firms are those who set goals and then plan how to achieve them. Um, and, and that's what we see, you know, with, with our clients. Those who've got a marketing plan are those that kind of hit those goals. So that's what we're trying to do in this webinar. Um, what I've tried to give you there is some of the tactics and, um, and kind of strategy behind successful marketing. Let's have a look at um, how to put that together into a plan. So this is an example of um, what we call a 90 day action plan. This is kind of like the, the output of or one of the outputs of the marketing blueprint process that I, I mentioned. Because we find the best time frame for a marketing plan is 90 days. You know, of course you have a longer term strategy but 90 days seems, we, you know, we've seen that working best um, for creating an actual action plan because you know, it's like long enough a period for you to see some real results in terms of leads and revenue, but it's not so long that you know, it becomes fictional. You know, I'm sure we've all written those plans where we've kind of planned like three years of activity and you know, it's, it's just a complete fiction. So yeah, in, in business marketing pro process, you know, we work on the strategy and, and the tactical plan as well. 
And here's an example of a 90 day plan with growth marketing tactics that would suit most kind of firms. And actually we're gonna give you this template. Now you can, if you have a look at the handout section in the um, go to webinar panel, you'll find it in there along with the slides from this webinar. And um, we'll also send it to you in an email after the webinar. So I'm just gonna go through some of the tactics really quickly now. Um, but you can, like I say, download that and adapt it to, to your own firm. So, as I mentioned earlier, serious business-to-business -business marketers prospect every day and they follow up every day. That, that's what I would call outbound marketing. And so outbound marketing features heavily in this plan. So you can see it starts in week two and then Every following week, you know, there's a task in there to reach out to 10 prospects. And that, that's really important, that kind of like numbers-based systematic approach to marketing. You know, we often get, I think, tied up in the fact that marketing has to be creative or kind of, you know, um, yeah, you know, be creative. You don't. It's about, there's, there's a time and place for creativity, but being systematic and just doing Numbers-based actions is what really works. So we also talked about marketing to existing clients and how that's one of the fastest ways to get more revenue. So in week one, you can see there's a client newsletter and in week three, an email blast promoting a service. Now this would be repeated, you know, in like week five and week seven, and again in like week nine, and week 11. So, you know, you can see this is very much a systematic approach to doing marketing. And, you know, we've also scheduled calling one client each week. So as well as being great customer service, that's obviously a great selling opportunity. And by systematizing it, you know, you've got a much greater chance of actually making it happen than just, you know, thinking, oh yeah, I'll, I might do that, put it in, um, you know, make, make yourself accountable to it and, and it's more likely to happen. So you, know, you can also see some other tactics in there like social media, blogging, um, and at the end of this 90 day plan, there's, there's even an event. So you know, download the plan or we'll send it to you afterwards and feel free to adapt this to fit your firm. We're not saying this is the exact way every firm should market, but this is a really great template to get you started. Now, as I mentioned, creating this 90 day action plan is just one part of Bizink's marketing blueprint service. We charge $999 for this service normally, but we've got two really great special offers for you today. So number one, we're offering a free marketing blueprint to one of you who's attended the webinar today. And all you have to do is complete the two questions. Marketing plan for you. And if you don't win, but you'd still like help creating a growth marketing plan, then I'd like to offer you a 50% discount off Bizix Marketing Blueprint service. So you can see the link to the Marketing Blueprint page in the chat panel and we'll send that out in the follow-up email as well. And so to get your discount, you just simply use the coupon code BizInc50 and that will give you 50% discount off a Marketing Blueprint. So summing up, I'm gonna stick around for a quick Q&A um, after, after the session. But to sum up today's session, first thing you really need to nail your marketing niche. If you're marketing to everybody, you're marketing to nobody. So, so make sure you've got a niche and you're really talking to that niche. Doesn't mean you're gonna niche your own whole firm, but bring focus to your marketing. Second thing is that like quick wins can actually be strategic. You know, some of those longer term uh, tactics like search engine marketing and social media, really good, but they take a lot of time before you start to see results. So if you need results now, the most strategic thing to do is the quick wins. 
avoid trying new things in marketing you know constantly being bombarded with all these kind of like new methods and you know kind of schemes and all this kind of thing about marketing traditional marketing methods you know the kind of old school maybe seem a bit boring stuff that's it, it's old school because it's tried and tested so you, know, you looked at events outreach email marketing three things that will they you know they've worked in the past they work now and they will keep on working in the future really important to make your website into a lead generator shouldn't just be a brochure it should be giving you um your know, regular leads so you know some of the ways that you can do that make it stupidly easy for people to get in touch um, you want lead magnets on your website make sure it's mobile friendly and and have a look at things like live chat and appointment booking all of those things can can really help get an uplift in in leads to your website and finally if you're going to hit your goals you need a marketing plan so download that template that we've given you there um, and like I say you can either win that marketing plan where we're going to help you work on it or we've got that discount if you want to work with us and, and we'll create a marketing blueprint for you so I'm going to stick around to answer your questions I uh, use the questions panel to to ask those and Anthony is going to come back on and we'll do our best to answer all of those if you've got to go now thanks very much for coming along today um, it's been um, it's been really cool being able to present this stuff to you and uh, feel free to reach out to us through the BizInc website bizincconline.com if you have any questions about anything raised in the session today all right so we, so we have yep yeah, yep yeah, we've got a few um, mark just wants a bit of clarification on what exactly is included in the marketing blueprint please yeah cool so um, We'll send out a link after the session as well, which we'll, we'll do that in more detail. But the fundamental way it works is we'll um, jump on an online meeting with you and really get to know the type of clients that you want to win. So we'll go through that whole process of who's your ideal prospect. We'll really delve into their pain points. That's the key to successful marketing is understanding your, pain, their, your prospect pain points. And then we're going to turn that into um, a strategic plan to how to get more of those type of clients. So we'll look at things like lead magnets, how you're going to convert them. We'll create that prospect map, you know, where do they hang out? So we'll do all of that stuff around new client generation. And we'll also do stuff about marketing to your existing clients because that's the low hanging fruit for all of you. You know, if, if you're not a startup and you've got clients, you know, probably the place you should start your marketing is with your existing clients trying to sell more to them so we'll do all of that we'll create this strategic document and then on the back of that we'll create an action plan which will map out 90 days of activities um, and you know that will be completely focused on the stuff that you want to do um, the stuff that you know fits within your budget and the stuff that we know is effective and yeah that will run for 90 days but really it's a template that you can keep on reusing you know the tactics in there not not going to kind of expire so really it's a it's a marketing plan template that you can keep on reusing so that's what's included um you get to you know um you, you get the plan you get the strategy and you also get to um join bizinx's uh private marketing community um so basically that's a private facebook group and you can get marketing support there you know share um shares kind of war stories with with other firms and we've got some really successful firms in there so that's an added benefit to it as well but we'll we'll send out an email with um with a link to it so you can find out a lot more about how that all works and can you just clarify how they can enter the draw to win the free marketing blueprint yep when the webinar finishes you're going to get a little survey will pop up from go to webinar two questions we're going to ask you why you think you should win win the marketing blueprint in less than 100 words um and then there's just another question a yes no question so it will take you i don't know 20 seconds <laughs> that's it so basically as you leave the webinar answer the survey you're in the draw 
Cool. We've got a couple from Nigel as well. Um, the first one is, is only working with those in the professional services, like as that as a niche, is that still too broad? Um, might be. I mean, you might want to start broad and then, and then narrow it down. I mean, you know, Biz Inc, we only work with accountants and bookkeepers, but even within that, you know, there's, there's like, a, we don't like to work with firms with loads of partners because, yeah, yeah, it's like decision by committee and all of that. It's really hard for us to get anything done. So we tend to work with like small entrepreneurial firms. Yeah. So we really define down, um, you know, what we do like that. Um, so, yeah, I think over time, you know, the narrower, I mean, to a point, the narrower you can get, the, the better it is because you can more strongly appeal to a narrow, you know, to a smaller group than, than a wider group. Um, so what I would do, say you're trying to do professional services, would be to say, um, you know, maybe do something targeted at lawyers, you know, could be a, I don't know, whatever, mortgage brokers, or that, you know, just guessing it. Segment it that way and see what works best for you. Another one from Nigel as well. He's a startup firm with very little fees, um, still starting up. Do those principles apply to himself or to more mature practices? So this was sent in earlier on in the webinar when you were talking about ideal prospect and prospect map. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, they apply to any firm, but especially if you, you know, if you're trying to win, like, let's say your first 10 clients, um, it's going to be much easier to um, appeal, you know, at, at that point, you don't have as much kind of reputation built up and, and all of that. It's hard. It's hard to win your first 10 clients in any, you know, in any sphere. Um, once you win 10, you kind of know, well, if I can win 10, I can win 20. If I can win 20, I can win 100. Um, but getting to that 10 is hard. Um, so you've got to create ways because you don't have that reputation, trust, credibility that an older firm has. You've got to create. You, know, you got to create ways where prospects think, I need to work with Nigel, you know. And actually, if you create some services that are really focused on a niche or a vertical, you know, your ideal prospect, that's going to differentiate you straight away. So I think it's really important at that startup phase to, to dial in on that stuff. It can be much easier to convince someone to work with a startup if you've got something really unique about you than you're just a generalist. Andrew is asking, how will you help us market to our target client? Um, how will we at BizInc do that? Um, maybe Andrew, if you want to clarify, put that into the questions window, but I think yes. <laughs> um, well, I'll talk to that and then um, if there's some clarification, I can kind of modify what I'm saying. I mean, look, what we do at BizInc is um, you know, we do websites, we do content and marketing tools for accountants and we can either sort of give you like a DIY option where you can, you know, we give you the content and tools and you go and do it. We kind of, or we can kind of do it with you. So you do a bit and we do a bit and we kind of work on it together or we've got a completely done. Sorry, Matt, the lines just dropped out there for me. All of that. So we kind of got different packages which are suited for different, you know, budgets. And, you know, some people really like to get more involved in the marketing. Other firms are just like, look, take it away from me. So that's how we help. Um, hopefully that, that clarifies it. Cool. Um, just got one more that I can see for now. What's the most effective marketing tool for accountants that you've seen? Mm, most effective tool. Well, it's really hard to say one tool is going to be you know, effective for all firms. All I can say is there are certain things which um, do work well for pretty much all types of firms. And yeah, I think they, they were some of the tactics I tried to call out earlier in the session. So you know, face to face in events always works well. You know, as accountants and bookkeepers, you're in the relationships business. So, um, you know, getting in front of people whenever you can is, is really important. Um, you know, 
Bizink is a virtual company, so it's, we, we haven't you know, we haven't met a large proportion of our clients, and that's a disadvantage. So that's why we try and go to like conferences and events whenever we can. So that'd be number one. Number two, outreach. It works for any business to business company. You know, you need to follow up. Um, you need to prospect every day and follow up every day. Um, you know, it's one of the only ways you can predictably get new revenue and actually the book predictable revenue that i mentioned by aaron ross highly recommend that anyone reads that book um it, it's a very practical book on how to grow um a business to business company and final one would be email um 44 for every dollar spent that's the return on investment so you can't look past that you know social is probably down near like ten dollars roi search it might be about round 20, but nowhere near email. So those three tactics, that's why I mentioned them in the webinar. Um, I wouldn't go past those um, in, in any marketing plan. Awesome. Just got another one from Andrea. As part of working with BizInc, would you evaluate our LinkedIn and Facebook and our AdWords? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, part of the marketing blueprint process is that we look at what marketing that you've that you've already got um, and and look to optimize that so yeah that's absolutely something we can do and um, one thing that we can do for all of you maybe um, Anthony you could just paste it in because I'm conscious that we're just about to come up to the hour and we'll, we'll wrap it up after this but we do something called a website audit and that's where we take a look at your existing website um, so so Anthea and her team does that so we basically take a look at your website and say this stuff's working well and here's some suggestions on how you can do that better um we'll share the link for that as well in the in the follow-up email but that's a really popular way we can give you some free feedback on how your website is doing 